hard for me to actually cast and try to hit a fish with the lure. Oh, bonk him. That is so contrary to everything I've taught myself since I started fishing. Oh, you want to knock the senses out of him. So it takes a totally new presentation, new to me anyway, to fool these carp. They care less about the look of the fly and more about the sound of it plopping in the water on it. and the way it sinks. He's on it. Got it. All right. Oh, sorry. I couldn't tell where. Not your fault. I just couldn't tell. You know, Flip, you've got to see their mouth open and you've got to time it. It's, it's really so rhythmic. You have to time it just right. And you see the wider their mouth open and then, uh, and then you see it close and then that's the time to tighten up. And it, if you're just a split second too early, the way their mouth is, you, you don't get it. There he comes over here. See him coming up? Yeah, I got him. Hit him. Do it again. Oh, do it now. He's on it. He ate it. Perfect. That was so fun. Did you see him rush the line? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, it's amazing how they respond to that sound. He's got to hear it hit. Boy, you are so right about that. My whole training is to make the fish unaware of the presentation. And this darn thing, you've got to make him aware of the presentation or he's just not going to get in the game, is he? Yeah, it's, it's a tough thing to get used to. You've got to hear it hit. You know, you're, you're, you're using a, another sense. You're using a sense of hearing, and we're just not used to that. You never know. These guys give these little lunges. Mm -hmm. They're a lot different here than stream or the Great Lakes, they don't they don't run out. They uh -huh. don't take you into your backing. This is a down deal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a very unique uh, situation. My buddy Brian Fleischig claims this is the fly fishing of the future, wrestling with carp. He thinks the unthinkable, and he just might be right. Carp fishing is completely unpretentious like fishing for panfish, and yet it takes all the finesse of angling for trout and bonefish. What if I can get it out? When they're going for the berries, they don't mess around. They're beautiful fish, actually. They got pretty color to them. Whitlock says a cross between a cutthroat, bonefish, redfish, and a stainless steel fish. Stainless steel fish. Yep. Dave's right. A carp is a conglomerate, three or four different kinds of fish from the time you spot it till the time you turn it loose, yes. which you do unless you're going to eat it. All right. I'm really impressed with the way he just ripped over to that fly <laughs> like that it great? was a lizard or something. And well, they, it. they hear it hit the water and they just charge it. Huh. You know? They don't even think about what it looks like at that point when they're keyed in. Fast as they strike, there's a fine line between spooking the fish and getting their attention with the dropping fly. It took me a day to get the hang of it even with Brian's coaching. And Brian had to learn it once, too. When did you first start fly fishing for carp? Was it, did you start on your own, or did Dave get you started on this? Nah, Flip, I would actually say that uh, Jim Andrix, who uh, started working at the shop about eight, nine years ago, who's been a, a pretty big influence on my warm water career. I would say Jim got me into it first. He's been carp fishing for years and years. Fly fishing? Yeah, absolutely, fly fishing for him. Uh, he loved smallmouth bass fishing, but when that wasn't happening, he started chasing carp around. And Heck, he had a full selection of flies that he had designed for carp uh, 15, 20, 25 years ago. I'll be darned because I never heard of it at all until Dave Whitlock started talking to me mm -hmm. about doing it in the Great Lakes. Sure. And foolishly, I just believed that that was the only place that it happened and the only place that people did it. And I was shocked when you started telling me about this mulberry thing. Oh, yeah. Often, the trick was to draw them out from the bank with a cast or two, oh. then drop the fly close to the fish without spooking it. Now we'd see if the first carp I caught was only a fluke. Oh, you 
lines right on top of him. Oh, I was looking at the rope. Although he, he's turning, Flip. He's turning. Leave him. Uh, I don't think he's going to do it. He, although, if you get it out without spooking him, he might plop one in front of his nose. Maybe he's thinking. Watch his mouth. Yeah. Okay, he's sticking his nose out. On it. Excellent. Boy, there's a load of them in there. Yep, yep. They they got berries too. Now he's gonna fight pretty much like a tuna. Pretty much like a tuna. He's just gonna go down and down and down. No, no. He's going to have to come up and up and up. There you go. <laughs> there will be no tuna tactics here. Those are tactics that I know. See, he probably thinks I'm some flatlander that's unaware of these tactics. <laughs> Mulberry season isn't the whole story of fly fishing for carp, but it's one lively chapter. Do carp fight harder when they're bursting with berries? All I know is, this one's an armful with a five-weight fly rod. Right. Mulberry trees grow naturally in Asia where carp come Talk from, right so it's a sort of ethnic food for the species, like polar bears in the Arctic feeding on Excellent seals. Toast. You know what? I'd like to see you catch one. Fair enough. Get your stick ready. So Brian scans the mulberry shadows for fish while I get busy trying to look like a carp guide. <laughs> 